What's up guys, hope y'all are doing well. Today we are finally working on the shed again. This thing honestly has been a really great help to have it to store things in, but it is so ugly and I'm tired of my backyard uh, being super ugly. So I'm gonna be working on it in the next couple months, getting it finished, getting it looking nice, and that way we can kind of get the rest of the yard looking nice too, um, because as you can see, it's pretty ugly. So I'm also in a position now that I can finish it mostly for free. Um, I have some Tyvek that I got for free. I have some siding that I got for free. Uh, the only thing I haven't gotten yet is some roofing. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to wrap it with Tyvek. So let's get to it. So in case you guys didn't already see, we are putting out this tie bag with these little button caps. So these are about six bucks, and I got this tie bag for free, so it was about six dollars to wrap this uh, in tie bag. And I probably could have scrounged these up too if I tried. Want to see how fast I can nail? All right, guys. We got the wood back here, as you guys can see, we got the trailer backed up to the fence. Um, the next step before we go ahead and put on the siding is I want to go ahead and get this window in. So unfortunately when I made this... So unfortunately when I made this window opening, I did not actually think about what the standard size for windows are. So lesson number one if you're going to do this, make sure you do your research and know what the standard window sizes are. Because this is too short, so I'm actually going to cut it out and reframe it just a little bit. So I'm not gonna video that because I've already done that once, but I'm going to go ahead and reframe it and then we'll be able to put the window in and we can start on our siding. So I got the compressor running. The plan is that I'm going to use my uh, little nail gun to nail these up. I got the first board cut. I went ahead and popped a line at the bottom. That's where I'm going to be putting the bottom of my board so I can cut them all basically the same length. So let's get to it. Alright guys, we got all of our siding nail on with our 18 gauge nailer. The next step is to reinforce the siding to make sure it's not going to come off uh, in a bad storm or something. I got some one and a quarter inch construction screws and you see what I've gone ahead and done here is I've hammered them in. Uh, we're going to do four up and down each side of the board. So it'll be eight total for each board. And then I'm going to hammer these in and go back with the drill. And when you have one person or uh, one or two people, it's a lot faster to do it this way. So. That's what we're going to do. It'll take me a minute to nail all these in, but then it'll be a lot faster screwing them in. All right, the next step, we got this front door. We're going to be putting some trim around it. I just ripped down some boards straight in half, and we're going to use that to basically trim it out, and we'll put a little uh, cap on the top to make it uh, just a little bit nicer. So as you guys can see, my shed ended up with a different looking door. This one came from a site where these people were getting rid of this door. Uh, even though it's like a $300 door, they were replacing it with an even nicer one. So I ended up saving about $300 using this recycled door. And it's a, it's a pretty nice door, to be honest. All right, guys, we got one by tens on all four sides of our shed. The next thing is we're going to begin trimming this out. Obviously, I got the front door already. We're going to start with our bottom piece, and then we're going to work up from here. So the very first measurement I'm taking is for this bottom piece. I'm going to notch out for the front door, and then after that, we can run our uh, battens up, and then go from there. Look at that. Quality craftsmanship. All right guys, we got our bottom piece on. The neck piece we have to worry about is our side pieces. For that, I've ripped down two pieces. The dimensions of this aren't exact, but this wood is three quarter inch thick, so I've ripped one piece three quarter inch smaller than the other one, because these are gonna overlap on our corners. 
So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brad nailer and nail these corners together so that way we get a nice flush finish and then I'll be able to screw them onto our corners. The next morning. Damn. All right, guys. As you can see, the shed looks phenomenal. Um, once we put the battens on, it really finished it out, covering up all those seams. The last thing that I've done is I put some base cap on. I actually got all of this for under $10 um, for all four sides, and I got that from a uh, Southern Surplus, and they've got really awesome deals there. So I got that for under $10. I just threw that on there. Um, Nikki actually helped me with the back side and with the sides getting all the measurements because there's quite a bit of measurements. But after all that, because the shed is done and it looks great, Nikki and I decided to do a little bit of celebrating and Nikki had the great idea to build a giant slip and slide. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold your AC, we didn't build this for you. Alright, I'm gonna try the float or this. I don't think I'm gonna roll it up with anything. Oh. 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 Here, get on the purple one. Alright, you ready? Yeah. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed it because that's it for today. The shed looks phenomenal. Uh, we really put a lot of time and effort into putting this signing on and it really pays off. Uh, the last thing that we're going to be doing in the next video is I'm going to be putting a roof on it and we're also going to be painting it. So if you guys have any paint suggestions, let me know in the comment section below. I've been thinking about white, um, but Nikki pointed out that it might get a little dirty if we did it all white. So let me know if you guys have any, any suggestions on uh, what color and what type of paint I should use for this. If you guys haven't seen part one through four, I'll leave a link in the description for that. As usual guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.